On today's show, I welcome Lana Davis. She's coming to us from the Dallas area. I found her on Instagram, which is where I'm finding really cool stories these days. I'm getting sucked into the reels, I have to tell you. And that's how I found her. The Roosting Place is uh, their tagline. Welcome, Lana, to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Well, I reached out to you because I saw you on reels. You mm -hmm. were kind of an overview of your story, which we'll get deeper into here in a minute. But I just love finding people that way, stories like yours that are authentic and fun and just really opening up your home and your renovation <laughs> and your whole story. So thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Like, I really just love being able to share. It's really fun. And there's so many really cool accounts out there. And I constantly am taking inspiration from other people too. And it's really cool how social media has really made the world a lot smaller and you get to find out how many stories other people have in common with you and just there's there's just so many cool people out there and i think instagram is a super cool way to find everybody well i think you lana are using um instagram and social media in a good good way right i mean we hear a lot of complaints about social media and i think that yours is just a positive light on just having a good time and building the life you want literally you're building the life you want piece by literally piece. yes we're gonna do one of my favorite parts about your story is that chicken coop but we'll oh my there. gosh <laughs> yep the chicken condo is its nickname it's, it's, like, it's right <laughs> out of magnolia magazine right it, it is i um, appreciate that lots of hard work you're welcome okay so let's get started i found you through instagram your instagram tag is the roosting place uh, is your name there and you and your husband have been together how long eight years eight. almost nine actually in october so married for two but together total for eight and where did you live before you moved to this dallas area so you're in the outskirts of dallas because you're basically yeah. a farm. um we're actually we are in the city limits um which makes a lot of our story and our process so much harder um but we actually originally I met my husband in Weatherford, which is about an hour west of Dallas. And um, we ended up moving. I went to Texas A&M for college and my husband moved down. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. So, um, so I went down there for school and my husband eventually kind of went down there for work. His job moved him down to Houston so we could be a little bit closer while we were still dating and engaged. And then we actually lived in Houston for about two years until we found this property randomly. I was scrolling online. Um, we always knew we wanted some land. We didn't, we wanted to move back up here closer to family before we started having kiddos. And um, so I just found this property in the middle of the city, five acres. It's beautiful. And so we had to come see it and we ended up buying it and completely moving up here within a span of like, eight months so it was a complete change and a flip but we love it people don't realize that a lot of it well the cities in texas have so many trees i live yeah. in the houston area in the houston area as well uh -huh. not so far from where you lived and you know they cut down so many trees to put in a neighborhood but when they do it right they leave yes. trees yes and you get you know a, this really a beautiful area there's so many parks within neighborhoods and all kinds of things like that. Trails. Yes, and exactly. It was funny because we, when we lived in the woodlands, we actually, there were so many trees, you had to use a GPS to find anything because there were so many trees and all the pine trees would block the businesses, which was awesome. But even living there for two years, I was still using my GPS because I couldn't find anything. Yeah, because everything's so grown that it covers the signs and all of the things. Yes. I get it, I get what you're saying. <laughs> so you moved to the Dallas area, found this perfect piece of property. Yes. So what was on the property that you saw? As you Was the barn there? What was there when you arrived? So when we got here, there was our big barn, um, which we use for storage now. There was the one. Called, which one? Is that the red one? It's not the red one. It's It was red. All the buildings here were red, um, which I think is super cute, but it's not my style. So um, there is a large barn that's right next to the house that we renovated. So there was, let's see, one, two, I guess a total of three barns. Um, I call it say barns because the house we renovated was kind of a shack barn lean to structure that in the ceiling would slope down to about six feet in the front half of it 
and had this big old low six foot carport on the sticking off the front of it and everything was made from metal studs <laughs> and we um we noticed it would flood because the drywall was flooded up about four feet and it smelled awful <laughs> so um there was this little structure that's the one we renovated a larger barn and then there's the red barn that's behind the chicken coop that we have not touched yet it's just where my husband's extra vehicle sits for now <laughs> so you had to have vision from the beginning absolutely like you, you would turn it into exactly and like i i loved it i loved coming into it that way because as soon as i saw it i could just see exactly what it needed to be for us and i was super excited and it was a battle to actually buy it because we almost lost it to another bidder and I'm so glad that they backed out and then we ended up getting it. <laughs> now, did both of you see the vision or was your husband kind of like, uh, you know, what are we gonna do with this place? Or how much work is this gonna be? <laughs> I think a little bit of both. He is super supportive and super easygoing and always like trust my crazy ideas. He's always like, I know that you're gonna, like whatever you have in your head is gonna work great. Cause he doesn't have a whole lot of the vision, but he has a lot of the physical know-how and the skills to make it happen. And so um, he always just kind of trusts my gut and goes along with it, and which I'm super grateful for because there's sometimes like that chicken coop. Um, he was probably like, when I drew up the plans for it, he looked at me like, really? <laughs> like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> well, we're, I, when, one of the things that I like about your story and how you're doing it is, you know, getting to follow from the beginning of something because mm -hmm. now you've got your plans for the house and you got mm -hmm. your funding we, we can talk about that in a minute but so where you live right now where you're zooming in from is that that's your temporary because you're going to build a house too and did you always yeah. know that piece of yes it? we did so we did we call it little house because it is 750 square feet and um it's the one that we gutted that was the questionable structure and we knew go, coming into it that we were going to try and do it as strict of a budget that, as we could while also making it to where it would last for later because we want to make it an airbnb or a guest house or some form of secondary living structure um of, later on down the road after we have what we call big house you kind of, just kind of fix it up enough to live in while you're selling your house exactly but Dunk and had water damage. It probably had mold and all the other things you get in Texas. Yes. And it only, the layout was also very confusing because it's one big rectangle, but there wasn't in the kitchen, there wasn't a spot for a fridge or a stove. There was a sink and cabinets and that was it. And then the bathroom was more like a closet. It had one, a single standing shower that, I mean, I'm a small person and I wouldn't have fit in it and then the toilet was right next to it there was no sink in the bathroom um it was just the shower the toilet and then one small bedroom that just a queen bed could fit in and that was it wow and then there was you could tell that the previous people somewhere down the road because this property has exchanged hands i think four times in the past 10 years um someone had enclosed like a porch to make it an extra space but it was and there was um external ac ducting run throughout it so it was um it, well first was, like how do you have a bathroom without a sink i don't know and it was raised <laughs> up because yeah, instead of digging right? down to put plumbing they just put everything on above and so right. then they had built a platform so you would step on it and it would cave and so it would step on it and i was like the floor is gonna fall through <laughs> I was like, i'm about to meet some kind of rodent i'm sure yes, under yes, this yes um and it's really crazy to look back at pictures. Oh, it, looks lovely. Now. it looks lovely. Thank you. That's where you are now. That's yes, this is where I'm at now. So uh, it's it crazy to look back. You bought. How many? Say that again. How many acres is it? It's five. Five acres. Yes. It's and really it's about the limits, huh? Isn't that the cool thing about living where you live? Yes. It's um it's like I think we're five minutes from a small like a neighborhood Walmart, and then about maybe ten minutes down the road, there's a Kroger, there's the Sonic, there's all these businesses, and um, and then even twenty minutes away from that, we are um we're at the Texas Rangers ballpark and the Dallas Cowboys field and all of that. So we are really close to pretty much everything, which was my dream. I actually grew up part-time in the country on a chicken farm. And down in South Texas is where my, my dad lived. And 
um, you would have to drive 45 minutes into the closest town. <laughs> and while you had all this land and space, which was awesome, I hated driving it. And it, it was awful because if I forgot something for dinner, you're like, well, we're just not making that because I'm not going to run to the grocery store. Now I can send my husband. I'm like, hey, go grab some butter. And yeah. he's like, okay, I'll be back in 10 minutes. So, right. Well, when I was growing up, I always lived a little further away from everybody. And when I moved to Washington, I lived a lot further away from everybody and it makes it hard when you have kids because mm -hmm. it's a longer bus ride to school or you you know my parents were cool enough to give me like a half hour later curfew than everybody because it took me that long to get home right you know kind of thing so yeah. well, let's take a break when we come back let's dive a little deeper into some of the projects you've done and then the vision you have for your house we we're talking with lana davis you can follow her on instagram it's the roosting place we're going to share uh, lots of pictures and video of the things we're talking about. You've already seen some so far. So stay tuned, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, we're talking with Lana Davis. I found her on Instagram, love her story. Uh, if you wanna follow her, they are the roosting place. The tag is the roosting place. And I, we were talking about how you grew up on a chicken ranch, chicken farm. What, what commercial chicken farm. Chicken farm. A chicken yes. ranch is something else, isn't it? Chicken farm ranch. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what classifies the difference between a chicken ranch and a chicken farm. We had, I think, a total of 10 giant barns. Um, that I don't, I don't even know how many chickens were packed in there because they're broiler chickens, which are meat chickens. And it's actually really disgusting. Um, but my dad would always play this joke on me and when I was a kid, you do anything for money or extra spare change. And so he was like, oh, well, for every bucket of dead chickens you go pick up, I'll give you a dollar. And so I was like my little kid, like in my mask, my gloves, and rubber boots. I was like running around these like disgusting barns, which I thought were awesome at the time, picking up all these dead chickens. My dad was out in the truck just laughing because he's like, ha, 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 I don't have to go pick them up anymore. <laughs> That's a hard way to earn money. So oh. then let's talk about chickens in general, because you, people, I hear a lot of people have chickens. There are some, I think, in my neighborhood. Uh -huh. I haven't heard them, but I've heard about them. Okay. And then I know, like, my brother, they just built a uh, chicken coop nothing like yours no offense to his brother and his wife but nothing like yours and just a lot of people who have them and they're pets they're it's it's something completely different than it was probably obviously where where you grew up oh absolutely um this is actually my first time when i when we bought this property my first big project i was like i i told my husband i was like i want pretty chickens which are the egg laying chickens that um can lay all the colorful eggs and I was like that was my dream for this property and I mean that's why it was one of the first big things that we did other than the house um because I've always dreamed of having pretty chickens and not those nasty icky ones and I have heard there's tons of actually all of my neighbors pretty much have chickens around us too and I think it's just it's a really cool hobby it's fun for kids to get involved um and you're kind of involved from the hatching pro, pro uh, hatching process thank you I was like, what is the hatching process all the way through like their entire lives but chickens live for a long time like certain breeds will live up to 14 years oh so it's like getting a golden retriever or a, yes and i cats yeah cats oh. yes and it's funny because they're kind of an expensive hobby too because you for the first four to six months they're not laying eggs so our our hens aren't even laying yet so all you're doing is feeding them and feeding them and the feed gets expensive and when we accidentally got 20 chickens instead of 12 um they eat a lot <laughs> so um because that it's apparently called chicken math you order um at a set number online and the breeder will actually send you an additional five or six just in case some of them don't make it oh, and in our okay. case all of them you, are didn't doing know, great. you didn't know that math factor involved i did it i did it when i learned or, and I've, I've learned actually from a bunch of my followers that also have chickens like they'll message me message me anytime i talk about having extra chickens they're like yep that's chicken math for you and i'm like mm. i'm not chicken math that's what it's called that's i was funny. like i didn't know that and so um we are eventually going to rehome some of our chickens just because we didn't build our coop to have um, space for 20. <laughs> okay, let's talk about that coop. Okay, 
So did you have a vision for it as it is now? And where do you get your inspiration? Like I said, it looks like, it, have you pitched it to Magnolia Magazine? Seriously? Uh, no, maybe one day. Once, maybe once the whole garden is done and like yeah. beautiful and set in. You, and you're so good archiving it that you could actually, you know, you can show the, tra you know, the, the transition from each phase of completion. So Absolutely. let's talk about it. Did you have a vision for it? I know you got the plans from somewhere. They actually have plans for chicken coops. Yes. Did you modify um, it at all? I mean, what was your vision from the start? So I spent a good amount of time on Pinterest, which Pinterest is dangerous because that's where all of the pretty stuff goes, the edited pictures. And so nothing ever actually looks like Pinterest in real life. But yeah, I people, found- Including the people on Pinterest, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, <good. laughs> but so I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the general design, I wanted it to even look like. Um, and then I found um, another blogger who actually has built a similar um, chicken coop in the same shape and she sells her plans. And so we ended up buying her plans off of her and cause she sells them off of like her website. And um, we bought them and modified them to make them kind of fit what I wanted. So it's all very much the same concepts, but then we changed the dynamic, like the measurements, we changed um, obviously like the colors and just kind of um, incorporated different elements. Well, and the thing about too, what, what, I, what I see is the finished product, but if you just had a blank canvas, it might seem very overwhelming. So the plans are definitely a great starting point if you're serious Absolutely. about a chicken coop. Absolutely. And it's funny because mine ended up being way taller than we actually anticipated it to be because when we went to the store to go buy lumber, we were like, oh, we'll just go ahead and buy eight foot studs so it makes life easier. And I, for whatever reason, when I said that, I didn't comprehend that eight foot studs are what typically go in a house for like an eight foot ceiling. And then the fact that there's a peak on this too, so there's not a ceiling, this thing just got huge. As soon as we built one wall, I was like, I turned to Harley and I was like, oh my gosh, it's really tall. And he was like, well, yeah, they're eight foot studs. And I was like, <laughs> you weren't thinking about how high it was going to go once you added all the other. No, things. I wasn't. And of course it's also on a slab. So then it makes it a little bit taller. And I just had no clue what we were really getting into when we started. Yes. Mansion is what it is. Yes, it is. And they love it. These chickens are spoiled. Like, <laughs> yeah. And I, that's the thing too. So they've been with you since they were first born and you know, some chickens have it better than others, right? Some people they get to, some chickens get to live in a magnolia mansion and then others don't. And I feel bad, I seriously feel bad for those other chickens. I wonder how much they understand about how good they have it with you, but that's a whole, that's, that's a, just a thought that's running through my head. A whole other thought, yeah. <laughs> well, we had to make it big because um, we have an enclosed run because I don't want to free range our chickens, mainly because where we live, we have hawks that nest in the trees right above the coop. We have tons of snakes. We've got tons of raccoons. There's just a lot of predators that live right around because we have a pond. So it's just, there's so many dangers for them. And I get really attached to every single animal that I ever own. And if I lost a chicken to a hawk, I would just probably bawl and cry for days. <laughs> so I was like, we are just going to go ahead and protect them. So they are safe. We don't have to worry about it ever. And so that's why I talk about how we need to get rid of some because the run really comfortably like and humanely fits about 12 because they say to have about eight to 10 square feet per chicken for a run space. Well, I so, think you're living a pretty good life. I know I, it makes sense that they need more room, but I think you're doing a great job. That's and awesome. right now they're pretty, they're still kind of smaller too. So I'm like, they're okay for now. I don't, I definitely don't feel bad for them. They love it. I was like, <laughs> I've never seen any of them complaining. <laughs> so. Well, let's take a break when we come back. Let's talk about the house you're about to build and how long okay. it's going to take and the process you went through. I know COVID slowed things down quite a bit with your funding and all of the things. So we're talking with Lana Davis, the uh, Instagram uh, tag is the roosting place you can find her there and follow her story of renovating this beautiful piece of property outside of dallas of all places we'll be back in just a moment we are finishing up with lana davis that we've been talking about the property that you and your husband uh, harley bought just outside of dallas and have big renovation projects going. You're in the little house, 700 plus square feet that you renovated to live in until you build your bigger house, which we'll talk about now. Shared all about your chicken coop. So I can't imagine what your house is gonna look like. <laughs> That's your chicken coop. Uh, 
I am so excited for the house. Most excited. I'm most excited for our kitchen and to have a bathtub again because I have missed those things. It's, it's the little things. Um, but no, the house I think is comes in right under 7,000 square feet. It's two story with a basement as well. So you don't hear a lot of, about basements in Texas. No. But we are, my husband and I are both really excited about that because we're going to design it to look like a speakeasy. So it's his man cave. That's his, that's his zone. He was like, he always gives me the green light to do whatever I want, but he was like, no, I'll really give you the green light. If you just give me that space. So I'm like, you got it. <laughs> and I'll take the other uh, square footage. Yes. Yes. So we've actually had, we've been sitting on these plans for about a year now too. So a little over a year actually is we started drawing them up with our architect as soon as we brought, bought this property. So it has been a long process and we're still we're hoping we see the light at the end of the tunnel now and can start digging soon. But uh, play in your funding because of COVID, yes. the delays that happened with lots of things during COVID. So okay. then you finally have your funding. When do you expect to break ground? Um, it's a great question. Um, <laughs> we, uh, we were hoping to get all of this started back in January and here it is July now. Um, and we keep getting thrown around by the city. I mentioned we are in the city limits and they are extremely strict on their permitting. We live in a, like, we live in the city that is notorious for being the worst to work with to build anything. Um, and so actually I just had a meeting with the fire marshal yesterday. My husband and I went and talked with him. And so we are been given some answers and some green lights. So we think that we can finally resubmit for our permits for the third time. In the past six months and we are hoping to maybe start breaking ground in August so that's the new goal <laughs> well with all the things that you have going on I can tell you and one of the things I said to you when I messaged you privately we just have a couple minutes left but you have inspired me I think that I want to start um, taking up some hobbies with wood and doing some of the things that I want to do around the house with it and maybe um, I want lights in our backyard and we don't have a lot of trees back there so I think I wanna do the big pots with the pole that I can hang lights from and yes. watching you create your space. You know, not everyone's gonna buy five acres and build a 7,000 square foot house, but right. you can begin where you are and you realize that you're inspiring people to do that. You get messages like that. I do, I get messages and they honestly, they make my day so much better because I'm doing this for fun and it's something that I really enjoy doing and I love to be able to share it. And it makes it even more worth it when um, I get messages for people telling me that I've inspired them to start a project in their house or to just get started on anything. And it just, it makes me feel really good because it makes me feel like I'm making a difference in other people's lives. And it's crazy how something as simple as an Instagram page can do that for someone. And did you have, you ha you don't have, or do you have marketing background? Because you're really good at what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. I don't actually, I was a science major, but I just, I grew up in a very creative home. My mom was a single mom. And so I always watched her get out in her garden and just take care of the things that she wanted to do. Like she didn't have anyone that she could just wait on to get it done. So she had to be the one to just go out and start doing it. So I think I saw that and gained a lot of that motivation and kind of go get her spirit from her and watching her just transform any spaces that she would, could get her hands on. She would do it too. So um, I definitely <laughs> um, inherited that. Well, I think it's fabulous. And I come to Texas pretty much every year to see my family. So if I'm ever in the Dallas area, I hope I have an invitation. I'm inviting myself. Yes, no, absolutely. Come. I was like, once we have the house built, you can come stay with us because we'll have lots of room before we start filling that thing with kids. So oh, wonderful. Well, let's stay in touch. I'm going to keep following you and we'll, uh, I'll just, I look forward to seeing how everything evolves. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Thanks for following me. You're welcome. Follow Lana Davis, the roosting place on Instagram. Take care.